Yes, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to um, yeah, just present today. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person or well, online live. But yeah, I do think it's a wonderful initiative to um, for women to empower women in the STEM domain. Um, and I think it's lovely what everyone's doing to yeah, support each other. So yeah, just a brief presentation on who I am, what my research is, and yeah, how I feel about women um, in STEM. Um, so instead of jumping away, I'll just give a brief introduction to who I am so that you can fit a personality to the actual face. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so who am I? I'm an extremely adventurous person. I love being outdoors. I um, The only thing I love more than being outdoors is being outdoors with coffee. Um, so I've got this um, philosophy in life that um, work hard, play hard, but when you play hard, play hard outside. Don't do it in the same space that you're working. So sitting back and looking at videos on your phone is not considered playing hard. Playing hard would be to go outside, get some sunlight, sit in the park, um, exercise. Um, yeah, so really back that philosophy. Um, I grew up and I was born in Stellenbosch. Um, you yeah, a wonderful town to grow up in and live in. And I went to Stellenbosch Primary School and Stellenbosch High School, where I graduated in, at the end of 2018 as the Dux or top student in my class. Um, so then went on to study in the industrial engineering. Um, I'll delve a bit more into how I got into industrial engineering later on. But yeah, I love math. I loved solving problems. So it seemed very logical. Um, I graduated last, at the end of last year, in 2022, with my industrial engineering degree um, and went on to study further. I'm busy with my master's in more specifically operations research. Um, <clears throat> something not a lot of people know is, um, hence the cough, I was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at the age of three months. Um, it's a life-threatening lung disease. Um, and yeah, it, it does put a time span on your life. I think at the time, the um, life expectancy was 16 when I got diagnosed. But nevertheless, due to wonderful women and men in science and technology, I'm now able to live a full life um, due to new medications, new, new uh, therapies that's being um, researched to this day as well um, and improved on. So, yeah, um, but I do believe that such a core part of me and, and molded me and shaped me into who I am today in the sense that um, doing something halfway is not is not an option for me. I do go full out, whether it be in sports, whether it be in music, academics, whether it be in my personal life, relationships with people, I go all in. And I do think it's it's because of, of this illness that's made me who I am. Um, so, yeah, to move on, I love running. <laughs> running is a big part of who I am, and that's the way I kept my lungs healthy all these years um, before the meds were founded. Um, so also I got married a month ago. So juggling study life with husband being at home um, has been such a nice new challenge for me and I've been enjoying every second of married life. Um, so yeah, while I was studying um, industrial engineering, I um, found my true passion, which is operations research. Um, I got, I graduated as a uh, a cum laude, yeah, cum laude degree, um, and here are some of the other students, or all the other students who also cum laude their degrees, um, and as we can see, majority women, so I'm just saying, um, yeah, and then also I had the opportunity to be introduced into this domain of operations research in my fourth year project, um, where I'll touch upon my project a bit later. Um, where I was awarded the Gerard Geldenhuis Medal for my research at the Orsa conference this year, um, which is quite a big milestone in my career slash um, student life this far. Um, so why did I study industrial engineering? Um, so ever since I was, I was little, I've really had this interest in cell phones, in televisions, in computers, like technology all around, like whether it be a coffee machine, I like just enjoyed playing with these things. And, you know, whenever something broke down in the house, um, it was put in my hands and it was said, Lisa, fix it, please, we, we need your help. Um, and I would play around until I fixed it. And somehow I got, um, I had to fix all the technology that broke down in the house. 
um, and I decided to take IT as an extra subject in grade 10, um, as well as BAC accounting, because I really liked and I was intrigued by um, the business side of companies as well, and the financial books of companies. Um, and so in my first term of taking IT, I realized that IT is not for me. I really enjoy working on a computer. I love getting into the software, but um, learning about the hardware, I have no interest. So initially, I thought I was going to do mechanical, mechatronic or electronic engineering. Um, but with that big realization, I had no cooking clue whether I wanted to do be accounting or um, go into engineering. And hence, I went to the open day of Stellenbosch University and I discovered this thing called industrial engineering, which seemed like a good middle way between these two, um, a combination between technology, um, systems, and problem solving, as well as business side of things. Um, so I went on to study industrial engineering without actually knowing how much I'd enjoy it. Um, yeah, and then I got exposed to operations research the first time in my third year as a module, um, and I loved every second of it. Um, we specifically looked at optimization um, and algorithms to solve optimization problems, linear programming problems, and I could definitely for the first time see how problems relate to mathematics. So the whole thing behind operations research is models and modeling a real world problem faced by a company or by, by a person or modeling something that needs to be done in mathematical forms and implementing it and solving it using computerized systems or um, software or coding um, and that really intrigued me because I was combining the two things I love most. Um, I thought when I was younger, I'd be a continuous improvement engineer. And yeah, it didn't look exactly like I thought when I was younger. Um, so I had this idea of improving production lines, manufacturing systems, supply chains. Um, but where I'm at now, like I'm thoroughly enjoying improving systems through problem solving and through modeling and developing algorithms. Um, so excited to see where this journey is taking me. So instead of being on the production plant and looking at the physical machines or where to improve, um, I'd much rather simulate the entire plant, um, build a simulation and play around on the simulation. If I give more time to these production lines, what would be the end product, um, et cetera. So yeah. Um, Another thing that, that really drew me to operations research, it is known as the science of better. Um, and in my life, I've never settled for good enough. I've always pursued excellence. Um, and I think that's why operations research really just sat well with me is we're not settling for a system that works. We want it to be optimal. We want the best possible system to be implemented. Um, so my research from last year was focused on developing a decision support tool for vehicle routing in the retail sector that's aimed at improving driver route familiarity. So without like jumping into the nitty gritty stuff, um, <coughs> I basically had to develop routes or take the shortest or cheapest routes for a truck to deliver clothing supplies to different customers or different stores. Um, so what would be the optimal route, almost like Google Maps, um, what would be the optimal route that this truck needs to follow to save the most money and to make the de most deliveries possible um, to these different stores? Um, so I think what I took away from this um, in my fourth year was that I really enjoy modeling real world problems where I see the relevance of the problem and I'm able to fully indulge in this problem, fully um, find out what's the best way of going to solving it, um, how can I model this in mathematical terms using optimization algorithms. Um, so yeah, if you want to know more, please feel free to email me. Um, so to the actual reason we are here, right? Um, I think I just don't, I'm not going to talk through some of the shocking facts I saw, um, but I do want to take a moment to actually honor the woman who, who fought so hard for us um, 50, 60 years ago, where women was not even allowed to study engineering or study technology or study in science, science um, where we couldn't apply for these degrees. And 
where we're at now. I mean, we're reaping the fruits of the fight they fought so hard. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I do think that we are reaping the fruits, but it's not over yet. Um, we still need to motivate young individuals, including myself, as well as young working adults, to stay in this domain. So if we look at the retention rate of women in the actual, dom actual domains of STEM and where they studied, um, yeah, they don't, not a lot of people stay where they studied or stay in the, in the domain. So the problem we're seeing is that people are studying engineering or studying technology, but they go on to work in a whole different sector. Um, or people actually only work two or three years in the sector. They come across problems, um, they're not treated equally, and then they decide to leave. And I think if I can encourage you, um, if there's one thing that I'm calling all women to do is, is don't just leave because it gets tough. Don't, don't leave um, because people are treating you poorly because leaving um, someone else or probably another woman will be appointed and treated exactly the same. So try and fight that fight. Try and put in the effort to change the environment you're working in, the atmosphere you're working in. Because if we all just leave um, and go into other domains, um, yeah, not a lot of women will, will continue continue to work in STEM. Um, so I think, yeah, from these facts, that's basically the conclusion I had was was we need more women to stay in these domains. Um, so yeah, some of the challenges quickly to run through that that I've been um, facing as a, a young engineering student was, I think what I've seen was pe women struggle to ask for help. We've got this idea notion that um, because we um, don't necessarily belong in this domain or due to past discrepancies and discrimination, um, we need to prove ourselves. And we really don't. Like we, if you're not understanding something and it's easier to ask for help, ask for help. Like asking for help does not show weakness and that you not belong. In, in retrospect, I personally believe that asking for help shows more bravery than just keeping quiet because it's more difficult to admit you don't know something than it is to pretend that you know something. Um, and then the second thing was that what I've seen was women tend to, to go more to the soft skills and we get handed the soft skills where the guys fo focus and get their hands dirty with um, building stuff and coding and doing the actual math. And um, a lot of times in group projects, we, we tend to go more to typesetting the document or typing the document or um, you are just working with people, which is also extremely necessary. But a lot of times women try, tend to hold back and have the men get their hands dirty because they seem more passionate. But um, I don't, I mean, they don't know your passion. And if you want to get your hands dirty, go. Like if you want to be in the middle of that 3D printer, go get your hands dirty do the design um, and speak up like it doesn't you don't need to be pushed aside to do the soft skills um, and i think our, our university has done such a great job of um, getting everyone equal and encouraging equality but it's still a mindset that us as a younger generation need to work through and push through that we we're studying engineering which is amazing but we're also allowed to to build a hammer or um, build a machine or a speaker. Um, we don't need to sit in the back and, and only do the soft skills. Um, and then I think I want to end off um, with, with some tips that Prof Blaine, uh, Associate Prof in the Department of Mechanical and Mechatronic Engineering, um, said at one of our events is um, she encouraged us to seek models and mentors. And with that, I also want to encourage you to be a model, role model or a mentor um, to, for ex example, matrix to grade eight. Um, be that person that you want to grade eight to, to look up to, but also get yourself one that you can share with and look up to um, and follow footsteps and um, have a goal in mind. Um, and then also female engineers don't need to man up. Um, I think a lot of times we think that we need to dress more masculine or because we're an engineer or um, wear our hoodies because that's what everyone else does. Like, no, um, you can be your beautiful self wherever you placed um, while working on your hammer or building your speaker. Um, be your feminine self. We actually need that soft side 
and more emotional side in this in this domain as well. So yeah, you don't need to man up. Um, and then the last thing was exude confidence while at work. Um, yeah, I touched on that where I think we we need we need as women to be confident, and um, even if we don't know something, like I think, yeah, not just be confident in your skills. You've got the same in interest, you've had the same knowledge, you've got the same degree um, as men. So exude that confidence that they are able to have. Why why can they have confidence in this degree and we can't? We've got the same degree um, and went through the same classes. Um, so yeah, I, I just want to say thank you for this tremendous opportunity. I try to keep it as short as possible, um, but still say everything that I wanted to say. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, enjoy the rest of your evening. And it was so nice being here and having this talk and yeah, just presenting on my journey and experience in engineering. Thank you.